Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another tutorial. Today I will be doing a few tips and tricks, if you want to call it that, for speeding up your standard computer. Now most of what we're going to cover today works for all versions of Windows, from Windows XP to Windows 10 and so forth. And pretty much everything we're doing today is, is safe. There shouldn't really be any negative externalities from performing any of these tasks that we are going to go into with this tutorial. So first thing is first, I'm going to start with what I like to go to first and it's usually MS config. So just click on the star orb down in the bottom left hand corner, type in MS config, click on enter. Now our system configuration window is opened up, go under the startup tab and if you have a lot of programs installed on your computer a lot of third-party programs like iTunes, Windows Messenger, that kind of thing they will show up in this list and you can see what the startup name is the manufacturer of that program you can actually see the file location of where it's originating from so sometimes if the manufacturer is unknown you can kind of figure out by looking at the command so for example, we see that we have the AVG Safeguard toolbar installed on the computer and it's set to start up when the computer boots up as we have a check mark next to it. Now, the more startup programs you have, the slower it'll be to boot up your computer. So what I recommend doing is going through your programs and just unchecking whatever you don't need to start up with your computer. Now, just because you uncheck something doesn't mean you're uninstalling it. You can still access it once you've booted up and you're using the computer normally it just won't turn on every time you turn on your computer so a lot of printer software you can disable that and then once you turn on the printer you should be good to go so you don't need that starting up every time you start up your computer so that's one thing you're gonna click on apply and then OK you should restart the computer once you're done making those changes but we're going to exit with that restart just for the sake of keeping this review short you can always go into safe mode or you could re-enable any of those entries later if you ran into any problems so it's not permanently modifying anything. The next thing we're going to do is if we click on the start orb again and we go hover over computer, we right click on that and then we click on properties. Click on advanced system settings. Now click on the settings button right underneath performance. So right next to performance click on the settings. Most of the stuff that you see in this list is just for appearance and there are a lot of things in this list that are just consuming system resources and if you're trying to speed up your computer you can just very easily disable all of them by clicking on adjust for best performance and that will disable all of them. What I've done and from my own experience in the past is I've kind of gone through and picked through which ones I wanted to enable which ones I didn't. But for the point of this review, I mean, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So we're just going to click on apply now that all of these items have been disabled. Again, just like what we did earlier with the startup items, we can undo any of this at a later time. All you'd have to do is just click on the adjust for best appearance and then they would all become selected again. Then you just click apply and OK. But we're going to click on OK right now. We're going to close out of that. Now there is a program built into Windows called Disk Cleanup. So if we go on the Start button and we type in Disk Cleanup and we click on Disk Cleanup, it'll actually scan your computer to see if it can remove any clutter files like temporary internet files, cookies, catch files, that kind of thing. Now the one main reason why I recommend using Disk Cleanup is that it sometimes does catch files, especially once you get into Windows 8, it'll actually have an option to re remove Windows update files that are no longer needed. So if you're using Windows 8, sometimes Windows will release updates that are redundant and it'll and disk cleanup will find a way to remove some of that redundancy by deleting unnecessary components of updates or something along those lines. Um, I don't particularly see it right now because right now we're in Windows 7 I don't see that option there but that is one good reason why I sometimes use disk cleanup and all you'd have to pretty much do at this point you can see the total amount of disk space you would gain just from these selected objects here would be 4.62 megabytes on your computer 
I'm sure it would be a lot higher, being that this is a pretty much clean factory install computer. There's really nothing on it, so that does not surprise me it's so small, but I have seen in my own experience this number could be as high as 100, 200, even 300 megabytes. I think it could even go higher than that, but just to give everybody an idea, now in order to remove these files, just click on Clean Up System Files. The window will relaunch and it will show that it is cleaning up some files here. Now that it's finished scanning, we can permanently delete the files. So we're going to delete that. We can see that it's cleaning thumbnails, old error reports, that kind of thing. So now that that's out of the way, now we can run CCleaner, which is a third-party application. It's a free program that you can easily find online. I use it all the time. It's a disk cleaner and registry cleaner all in one. Now, there are a couple of different versions of CCleaner. Uh, just make sure you grab the free version unless you want to pay for the professional version. I haven't really noticed any enhancements that are really noticeable from the free to the paid version. It's just a little bit more automatic in the paid version, but I mean, if you're diligent enough just to run and scan every once in a while, you're fine. But anyway, just getting into how CCleaner works, if you look on the left-hand column here, we can see we have different components of Windows. We see we have Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer, the system, and it shows whatever's checkmarked is what it's going to delete. And now you can easily uncheck anything that if you don't want CCleaner to remove, so you don't want to delete your history, you can just uncheck history, and there's really no problem with that. And what's also nice about CCleaner is it'll actually remove some files and catches from browsers, so Firefox, Chrome, I believe if you have Opera installed, that Opera will come up in this list. Um, Windows Media Player and some other programs might be displayed here. All you have to do is click on Analyze. It'll show you a breakdown of what it's set to delete. It'll tell you how long it took to run the scan, and then it'll tell you how much space can be cleaned. So when it says 50.7 megabytes be removed, that means it'll free up. 50.7 megabytes of space on your drive. And I mean, if you don't have a very large hard drive, I mean, this could be very beneficial to run. So we're going to click on Run Cleaner. We're going to get a little alert saying that it'll permanently delete the files from your system. Do you wish to proceed? Click on OK. Uh, depending on how many files CCleaner has put up to delete, this will take anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes. But that was pretty quick. And honestly, if you want to skip over the breakdown part of seeing what it's going to be removing and you just want to jump right into the removal, you can just click on Run Cleaner and it'll skip over that one step. Um, there's also a registry cleaner built into CCleaner. If you click on Scan for Issues, it'll come up with any registry keys that are no longer needed. Now one thing about is that program installers is that they won't fully delete themselves. So if you for say, for example, you install uTorn and then you try and uninstall it using their uninstaller, it'll often leave registry keys behind that are unnecessary and they'll just take up space and just some in my opinion I think it's better just to get rid of these registry keys. Now there's a big argument and debate whether or not running registry cleaners is worth the risk. There is a possibility that deleting important registry keys can leave your system unbootable, but I've never had an issue with it and I always recommend that when you click on fix selected issues and you get this alert saying do you want to back up the changes to the registry, click on yes, save it to some place so you'll easily be able to access it. Normally I just like to put it on the desktop and then I just click on fix issue for any issues that, that we get during the registry key removal process. If you have more than one registry key that's going to be deleted or resolved, it'll give you an option just to automatically go and fix all of them. But like I said, make a backup of the registry, just put it somewhere safe so if you need to go back to it later, you very easily can. And if you're wondering how to restore back from any registry keys that might have been deleted from CCleaner, we just click on our little registry editor icon, which is what we created on the desktop right here. 
If we click on yes, we see that it'll add whatever the information that was deleted back into the registry. We're not going to do that, but it's very simple, not too difficult to do. There are a couple other registry cleaners out there, but I personally have always liked using CCleaner. So on to the next thing we're going to do here. Always try and run an anti-malware, antivirus scan every so often. So I have Malwarebytes, just as an example, installed on the computer here. Now Malwarebytes has gained a lot of popularity over the last few years as a free malware anti-spyware scanner. Now I use Malwarebytes on a daily basis when I conduct anti-malware and antivirus reviews over on my other channel but I do like using Malwarebytes as an on-demand scanner on the side meaning that you just run scans of it it's not actually running in real time on the computer taking up resources which is great unless you are actually have it open and running a scan and in all truth when you're running a scan with any antivirus anti-malware program you really shouldn't be doing anything else on the computer alongside of it it's just best to kind of let it do its own thing but definitely just run a threat scan full scan every antivirus anti-malware seems to have a different name for it just make sure it's all up to date make sure the virus definitions are up to date so it can effectively detect newer malware because in all honesty if you're not using an up-to-date antivirus anti-malware program it's not going to be able to offer you that much protection against newer malware which I mean the internet's full of that stuff and that kind of goes on to another thing um, always have an antivirus installed on the computer if you can help it Malwarebytes it's good as a scanner not as real-time protection not actually protecting you when you're browsing online so I mean there are a lot of free antiviruses out there that you can choose from I know some people prefer to have paid antiviruses but I mean, just a few off the top of my head, I mean, you have Avast, AVG, Microsoft Security Centrals, which is developed by Microsoft, and the list just goes on and on. There are so many antiviruses to choose from, there's really no good excuse. Uh, just try and pick one that doesn't take up too much memory. If you feel the computer really bogging down after you install an antivirus and you believe it's that program that's causing the slowdown, um, I would just recommend honestly uninstalling it and going to something else because there are so many to choose from you just kind of gotta play with it a little bit and find which one's right for you so one more thing let's just open up Google Chrome here as an example so sometimes when you're actually browsing online you'll have extensions add-ons on your browser so those will slow down the rendering speed of web pages you go on so when you visible on each page it might be slowing down the performance of your browsing experience so one way to pretty easily resolve this so just click on this hamburger icon which, which is what I call it up in the top right corner here click on settings and then go under extensions and we can see extensions that we have installed in our browser now some of these will actually have programs installed on the computer as well but they will often have stuff bundled with the browser you're using and it will slow down your whole browsing experience so there are two things you could do you could either just disable the add-on if you might want to go back to it later or you could actually just delete it so let's just say we want to remove it we just click on remove remove the AVG secure search we click on remove it's gone it's not going to come back unless you get a dialog window coming up saying that AVG extension is ready to use if you get something like that and you really don't want AVG just click out of it click no thanks just just don't do it so one last thing here if you go under start and then under under control panel and then under programs uninstall program you'll see a bunch of different programs that we currently have installed on the system here now I know my personal list I have like three or four times as many programs installed and I'm sure most people do as well and if you are looking to free up space on your computer or you're just looking to get rid of some programs you may not need anymore rather than just disabling them from booting up when the computer boots up through msconfig you can just go right out and delete the program 
So just as an example here, all you have to do is just click on uninstall change. We're not actually going to uninstall, we're just going to click on next and then if you want to uninstall, you just click on uninstall. Uh, most un uninstallation processes are pretty self-explanatory, just follow the on-screen directions. So that's not usually too bad. And there's one final thing that I want to show everybody, and that's if you go under starting, type in disk defragmenter. We see we have a program called disk defragmenter. Now this is a built-in Windows program, just like disk cleaner. And basically what it'll do is it'll consolidate files on your computer and it'll relocate them to places that'll be quicker. So if you have files all over the place, it'll basically organize the files so that when your computer is looking to access or read files, it'll be able to do it quicker and more efficiently. Now for an example here, we can see if you had any other disk on your computer, they would show up in this list. So if you had a recovery disk or anything like that, a D or an E drive, it would show up. We just have our main C drive right here. If we click on Analyze Disk, it, just like Disk Cleaner, it'll the window will disappear for a moment and then it'll reappear. Generally, depending on how big your hard drive is, it'll take a varying amount of time. So that was pretty quick. Um, we see when it was last run, we see that we are 1% fragmented. Disk Defragmenter doesn't specifically tell you when you should defragment. It'll just tell you how much of your disk they are detecting as being fragmented. Generally, my rule of thumb is if it's anywhere like between 5 and 7%, it's a little bit too much for me. Um, I'll even do it sometimes around 4% fragmentation. And this is for people that really want to stick with Windows applications and don't really want to start experimenting with other third-party programs. I mean, you can configure a schedule when you want to run the scan, so that's a nice feature. Personally, I use OsLogic's Disk Defragmenter to defragment my computers. Now, I do have to know I do modify some of those settings around a little bit, and that's not really what this video is about. If you want to look into it, that's great. I'm just saying this is a very basic Disk Defragmenter, and I usually notice a performance increase if the if the drive is any larger than three or four percent fragmented so it definitely doesn't hurt to do this like once a month I normally just defragment manually I don't configure a schedule because if your computer's off or you have something going on in your computer and then this this defragmenter starts it kinda disrupts what you plan on doing and it's another thing kind of like an antivirus scan, you really don't want to be doing anything else on your computer while you're running a disk defrag, being that it's relocating files on your computer. Honestly, I think that is about it for this tutorial, guys. I hope everybody might have learned something. This is more for beginners, but you know what? I mean, you can learn something new every day. So I think that will be about it for this tutorial, guys. Take from as you wish, and I will talk to you later. Bye.